All right, so now it's our chance to cut out our project. I'm using a quarter inch carbide cutter, a 1 16th inch a mono cutter, and a 1 8th inch um, ball end Freud cutter. So I'm cutting my wood, my oak piece. It's a three quarter inch thick. I'm cutting it to 16 and a half inches by 11.25. I'm gonna mark the middle of the 16 and a half inch mark so that I can match it up with my spoil board. And let me go ahead and show you my enclosure that I built for the Shapeoko, and maybe I'll do a video on the build later. Um, the enclosure, I use these LED lights. They come with a remote. They're multicolor. They're kind of cool. And I really like the features that they bring. Okay, so I'm going to cut out my narration here in one second, right after I show you the back of the enclosure where I use PVC pipes to run the wires. And I cut two and a half inch holes and then use PVC pipe. I'm going to cut my narration so you can hear how well the enclosure um, dulls the sound. So turn down your speakers now. It will get loud. All right, so the enclosure works pretty well for dulling down the noise and keeping the dirt and dust and debris inside. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm showing how I marked the middle of my spoil board. What I did is I moved the Shapeoko to center front and then took a marker or pencil and just mark a line at that center so you know the limits of the machine to each side and you can match the workpiece up to that. I have a Fusion tablet that works well with the Shapeoko. It's a Windows tablet um, and it runs Carbide Motion really nicely so I don't have to have a computer on the machine all the time or at all. It comes with a full size USB which is nice. Right now I'm zeroing the X and Y axis, axis manually and then what I'm going to do is use the bit zero to um, zero in that Z axis. And with the bit zero, one key thing to remember and one thing I messed up on originally is when you're doing just Z height uh, zeroing, you need the bit zero to sit on top of the material, not overhanging. It is meant to sit on top of the material when you're just doing Z height. So keep that in mind. Otherwise, it'll think it is the, the zero is lower than it should be um let's see i do like the bit zero it's great for tool changes you can re-zero that bit height uh easily and the fusion pad i will say it has some what of a learning curve in getting it installed properly so at least for me i was confused i kept trying to get it installed it kept telling me it wouldn't work uh, but i had seen on other channels that people have had the opportunity to use them and I didn't want to run a computer all the time on my machine and so um, what was going wrong was I was installing carbide motion and it was like a 32 bit version or however that works I'm not exactly sure but I was running it and it was 64 bit programs trying to interact with it and so what I had to do is I had to go and download the 32-bit uh, counterparts to the Windows programs that needed to interact with Carbide Motion, and once I did that, it ran perfectly. Um, let's see. So the the tablet does work well. Um, I have my vacuum hose there in my enclosure, and I did a neat thing with the vacuum hoses. Maybe I'll do a full-out video on the enclosure. You can kind of see in the background here as as it starts to run that 1 16th inch program you can see in the background the hose connected to the pvc pipes what you can't see here is that i used three inch pvc pipes and i cut them nearly halfway through not all the way halfway through and drilled them into my enclosure and used those kind of as hooks for the hose as it goes through the enclosure and that's nice because it snags right in there nicely and it allows me 
to move the hose whenever I want. I just unclip them. And this is finishing up that 1 16th program. It took about 28 minutes and I changed the programs a little bit and I uh, show what I changed before making the cuts at the end of the video. I make a little bit of a, a display of what I changed before making these cuts. So that is what the piece looks like with the 1 16th inch program run and the 1 16th of mono bit. Here I'm going through the 1 8th inch Freud bit and it would have maybe been nice to not use uh, a rounded end mill or a ball um, but I did not want to use my other end mill which is mainly for aluminum and this is finishing out the front of the quarter inch program and you can see the cuts it made on the outside there uh, when I'm going to flip a project this is how I tape it up it actually malfunctioned and the tape did not stick here as you see I'm kind of trying to center it again it would be reversed this way so what I did is I went back to the computer program when I created the pro created the G code and I changed the wall hanger down to the bottom because I was flipping the project upside down and this time on the back of the project I run the zeroing from the top left corner so that I'm zeroing the top left corner there all right so this is the project uh, that was the unpainted version. I paint it so that I can then sand it down and remove the black paint from the top surface. And it leaves this black mark into the wood grain or um, kind of darkens the grain as well. And I like that feature. So I paint the whole thing black uh, with a matte black paint. And then I sand down the top surface. And you'll see it kind of allows for the top surfaces to to shine out and the surfaces that have been cleared out by the machine keep that black paint and as the black paint dries even more it becomes more matte and it, it, it makes for a really nice looking sign okay just uh just gonna go over a couple changes i made before doing the final cut here um, some of the things I've changed, so I shortened this operation by changing the depth per pass. I also changed the feed rate on that. Kept it the 1 inch end mill, um, and I'm still doing inside left. I just changed the depth per pass and feed rate. Then as far as the 1 8 inch tools, um, my 1 8 inch flat cutter is made for aluminum and I didn't want to run it on this uh, so I went with my rounded end cutter for the 1 8 and it should do fine because I've made signs with it before kept most of the things here the same I went with the 0 0.03 depth per pass I think I was going to go with the 0 0.04 but in this case I went with 0 0.03 um, and let's see yeah so all of the eighth inch operations I switched to the rounded or ball end mill and then let's see anything else oh one of the main things I also did was when you look at this cut I'm actually doing that with the quarter inch end mill now and the reason for that is if you saw the previews before now, the preview before had this little lip here, and I didn't want to have to go through and carve all those out. So with the quarter inch, it uh, takes care of that lip there in the design. All right, anything else? Oh, depth of cut for my final passes here. So originally, on this final cut on the outside, I. Uh, originally had it going to I think 0.65 inches and I was going to come clean it up I know my stock is 0.75 inches a little over so what I'm doing now is I'm doing a 0.72 which will mostly cut it out and then when I flip it over to do the nail hanging portion 
um, more screw hang portion I will do a 0 0.045 depth cut on that so that's a total of 76.5 and that'll for sure clean out all the material left behind and leave the sign nice and clean uh, the only other thing I've changed I actually did change if you look at the design I changed these three cuts one two and three and the reason for that is because I know my stock is 11.25 exactly and I used to cut right on the 11.25 mark but that leaves the risk of that last cut um, not hitting all of the material and leaving a different finish on the edges and so by decreasing this mark right here I pretty much took a quarter of each off so if we look right there it was 16 by 11.25 now it's 15.75 by 11 and that's going to make sure that when my cutter goes for it it will dig into some material and that was just what I wanted. I wanted the edges to look uniform as far as being machined. Alright, so those are the main things I've changed with this before printing and that's the benefit of having this software where you can go back and edit it um, over and over. So, and now it's time to start the cut.